Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here, and as we welcome in a brand new year, 2023, what better way to celebrate than to look back at the previous year? The previous year for Pokemon had been very tumultuous. We got multiple new games, multiple new controversies, and a lot of question marks about what the future will be. So before we look forward to what's next for Pokemon, let's take a look back at 2022 and ask the question, is it one of the best years for Pokemon ever? Let's jump right into things. We're going to leave Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl out of this. I want to talk about 2022 as a year, not just the previous calendar year of Pokemon games, which is BDSP in November of 2021, Legends Arceus in January of 2022, and Scarlet and Violet this past November. We're going to talk about the games that came out in 2022, this time last year to now. Legends Arceus, at the very beginning of the year, brought us a brand new open area-esque Pokemon experience with massive explorable zones and a town that would continually grow and evolve as you made your way through the story. It had side quests, it had a new altered battle system, it had a story that was one of the best that we've ever gotten from a Pokemon game, and it took a lot of the tropes of modern Pokemon and turned them on their head and gave us a fresh experience. That experience was open to criticism, of course, graphics being an obvious critique of most modern Pokemon games, and it was it was laid at the feet of this game as well. But there were also some people that disliked the technical changes to the game, didn't like some of the stripped down battle mechanics, didn't enjoy the styles of attacks. There were a bevy of criticisms. Me personally, I love Legends Arceus. It is one of my top five favorite Pokemon games of all time. Not only is the gameplay gripping, but the loop of collecting items and Pokemon and then reporting back to Jubilife Village is incredibly intoxicating. It is an incredible game. The music, the vibes, and the ambiance of the Hisui region and seeing how Sinnoh used to look are standouts to me. And I hope that in the future, we can see some other Pokemon regions get the Legends treatment and get some more amazing stories from the past to really flesh out the Pokemon world. After that, of course, we had the big announcement, the one that nobody saw coming. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, the ninth generation of Pokemon, a brand new adventure, a brand new region, a brand new mainline game, due out in the same year. This took me by surprise. If you watched my reaction video to the February 2022 Pokemon Presents, it took a lot of people by surprise. I was very confident that 2022 was going to be the year of Legends Arceus and the Legends Arceus DLC with an announcement for Generation 9 coming the following year. I was pretty convinced that the big games we would get were a spin-off game, something like Mystery Dungeon, Ranger, something of that effect, Snap, uh, Snap 3, uh, the, the Detective Pikachu sequel, something to, to that effect and the Legends Arceus DLC. But of course, we got Scarlet and Violet, and these games took Pokemon and fully brought it into the open world. You can explore every single part of the region on the back of Coridon and Maridon, or you can just walk if you're lame like that. You can climb every mountain. You can go across every ocean and lake. You can find legendary Pokemon in caves and collect stakes across the region. It has three different stories, and it is a very good Pokemon game. Just like Legends Arceus, and just like most modern Pokemon games, there still existed criticisms, graphics, performance, criticisms that are, in my opinion, more fair and more damning for Scarlet and Violet than they were for Pokemon Sword and Shield, for Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, and for Legends Arceus especially, the game I think of the four that deserves the least criticism in Scarlet and Violet. Scarlet and Violet at times was borderline un playable, with the frame rate crawling at three to five frames a second, Pokemon looking incredibly lifeless until you got right up close to them, and massive amounts of pop-in whenever you would explore some of the earlier areas of the game, as a matter of fact. But when Scarlet and Violet hit their stride, when you're exploring through the region and really engaged with the story, when you're catching Pokemon at every turn and building a team, when you're interacting with the lore of the region that is not pushed upon you. It is, it is out there for you to discover, whether it's at the school or whether it's unearthing these legendary Pokemon of Ruin. You are 
just enthralled with everything that this brand new region has to offer. Paldea is full of things to explore. And when it hits its stride, it is very easy to look past some of the graphical and performance-based criticisms that the games have endured. Now, before going any further, I just wanted to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos and hopefully enjoying them aren't subscribed to the channel. Now, of course, subscribing is free and you can unsubscribe anytime. And if you do subscribe, be sure to turn that notification bell on so you never miss another upload. And check out the join tab, see if the perks interest you. And if you want to go the extra mile and support me, that is also always greatly appreciated. Now, hopefully we do get patches. Hopefully Game Freak pushes through updates to make the game more playable, to improve upon what is already there. I hope that they do not sit on their laurels and sit on a lot of members of the community, including myself, being very happy with a lot of what we got in Scarlet and Violet, just moving to the next thing, DLC or whatever it may be in 2023. I hope they continue to improve because what they have shown us in 2022 is that we can get multiple different types of Pokemon experiences, making slight alterations to the mainline formula that we've all grown up loving, and it can be wildly successful and grab an audience of people that didn't really connect with some of the more modern Pokemon games. There are plenty of YouTubers on this site who have talked about Legends Arceus specifically at the start of the year being just a bright light for them, a re-entry into the Pokemon franchise, something that re-engaged their childhood love for the games. That is a real tangible thing. And it's because Game Freak chose to take that main formula and make smart alterations to it. I don't know if we'll ever get a year like 2022 again, where we get a Pokemon game at the very beginning of the year, and we get a Pokemon game at the very end that makes smart alterations to the mainline formula and give us very different experiences. Scarlet and Violet for the more traditional, and Legends Arceus for more action-adventure RPG than we've ever seen before from the Pokemon franchise. We might not ever get a year like this again. We could see years that come close. We could see DLC bleed into new years and then brand new generations at the end. We could see spin-off games that try to be more like the mainline games, something like Ranger or XD Gale of Darkness or Colosseum again, something that feels like it exists in the same Pokemon universe while also getting a brand new game. But I don't think we'll ever see a year again where everything lines up and we get multiple releases that are mainline, which Legends Arceus is on top of Scarlet and Violet, that give us experiences with such a breadth of different strong suits than we did in the previous year. For that reason, 2022 is a standout. 2022 is a very good and productive year for the Pokemon company and for Pokemon fans. And now that we have these games, we can look into 2023 with what is going to surely be Scarlet and Violet DLC, which we'll probably see next month on Pokemon Day get announced. And maybe a spinoff, maybe something else, maybe something to bookend the year, just like they've been doing recently. We don't know what the future can hold, but we can look back at 2022 and say that while there are criticisms to be made, and you should always be open to criticizing things that you love, whether it's video games, whether it's sports, whether it's movies and TV, and the teams and actors, directors, and developers you root for in all of these various mediums. Everyone should be open to criticism because criticism is how things become better. Criticism is how weak points of previous iterations of something become improved in newer ones. And that is the way Pokemon seems to be trending, which is, in my opinion, a positive. I'm going to have a more comprehensive video coming out in the next couple weeks going over Scarlet and Violet's flaws. I apologize for taking all of December off. There were some personal things that came up. The end of a uh, hype cycle for a new generation took a lot out of me. It was just the perfect storm where I needed a bit of a reset, but I am excited for 2023. I am excited for everything that we're going to have on this channel and everything that we're going to get from Pokemon and other forms of content that hopefully I'll be covering this year as well. So if you enjoyed the last year of Pokemon, let me know in the comments section below. What were the high points for you? What were the low points? What things would you like to see changed? And what are you hoping to see improved upon in 2023? If you're not subscribed to the channel, but you enjoy content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn the notification bell on so you never miss another upload. With that being said, I've been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.